And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you this morning. We are visiting with a, a good, good friend, Paula Gates, from Pathway Caring for Children. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. And you are helping us continue a theme week with November being Adoption Month. We are spending this entire week talking about adoption, getting lots of different perspectives, different stories, and seeing uh, this through all kinds of eyes and hearing people's hearts oh. about adoption. It's been really Really something so far, and I know it's going to continue oh, great. to be. Great. Thanks for asking me to come. Uh, so happy to have you. So you've been at Pathway how long? Uh, 28 years this month, actually. Well, happy anniversary. Oh, thank you. And tell us a little bit about your history with Pathway. Well, uh, I can tell you that Pathway's been around for 43 years. Jim and Velma Bridges started Pathway uh, with the idea of that all children need to have a family. And uh, I got on board 28 years ago, and at that time we only had uh, 12 foster kids, mm. and that was uh, 1988. Wow. How many now? How many children? Are... Well, we have about, uh, about 40 children in placement. Wow. Uh, and we have about 40 foster homes probably. And, of course, we've expanded to other services. Uh, and our uh, foster care stands out as far as it's a therapeutic foster care. And How does that make a difference? What is different? Well, that makes it different because of the kind of children that we have. And um, we believe that all children who come into the foster care system um, and are adopted are from a hard place, meaning they come from trauma, even prenatal trauma. Um, but um, our kids, as far as coming into therapeutic, come with uh, more behavioral issues and need uh, the interventions that um, therapeutic foster parents need to use in order to help these kids have uh, stability and being able to um, have the kind of trusting relationships that will help them have better behavior. What is a path to becoming a child that Pathway serves? How do you get your children? Well, we get um, our children from referrals from uh, Job and Family Services or Children's Services in each county. And uh, these counties, most of them have foster homes of their own, which would take family foster care children, which would be a lower level of care. And then when they can't find homes for the children that they have, uh, then they would call uh, an agency like Pathway Caring for Children or other private agencies that specialize in therapeutic foster care. What you described as far as children who require therapeutic foster care, uh, that might be one of the things that scare people out of doing this. Can you address that a little bit? What services do you provide for people who feel called but are a little hesitant just because they're not quite sure what they're going to be dealing with once they welcome this child into their home? Well, uh, we have special training that helps prepare people, uh, helps prepare parents for a therapeutic child. Um, and we have very qualified people who are doing screening in their home, doing a home study, and doing all the things to help them to be prepared as possible. Once they get a child into their home, they have a case manager who come into their home uh, maybe once a week, twice um, a month maybe, but who will be there to be able to support them, answer their questions, help them to know what they should do day to day. And we have lots of services and supports for families. We have ongoing training that really helps parents to know uh, what to do with these children once they come into their home and how to get the support they need for their individual issues. What I'm picking up from you is that traditional parenting might not specifically work with these children. You might have to learn some new tricks of the trade, so to speak, uh, new techniques to address things that under, I don't know, what is normal, but under other circumstances wouldn't be necessary. Am I reading this right? Yes. Um, our children come to us with a lot of fear, and most of their behaviors are about fear. And so you have to get under the behaviors. What are the behaviors about to understand the child and um, do techniques to try to help disarm the fear in order to get to the heart of the child and to make a positive connection and build mm. trust. 
can share with us maybe one of these techniques? Sure. Um, actually, um, we had this little program last week, uh, Connected Family Group. This is for adoptive families. And uh, we were uh, helping them to uh, the idea of honoring feelings by listening. You know, and that's one of the big approaches as far as disarming fear is to really listen and be emotionally present for the child, to give eye contact, to be approachable, to use a warm tone of voice. Uh, so the child wants to come to the parent, wants um, to tell them what's on their heart, and will be more likely to make this trust connection that's so important. I'm guessing, though, with their backgrounds, they might be very suspicious of someone at first who comes to them with a warm voice and eye contact and, and presence in the moment with them. Uh, what what can a parent expect? Yeah. Well, our our children from hard places, yeah, they have a lot of defense mechanisms, and they uh, are going to shut down, mm-hmm. close off other people, mm-hmm. and they are not going to trust easily. So it really takes a lot of persistence in this method, and we call it trust-based relational intervention, of doing this consistently and really uh, letting the child know that I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, giving that message in words, but also in all the things that they do and say, and the idea of uh, really giving this child priority. It's fascinating uh, what we've been learning this week as far as the foster to adopt and so forth. Uh, We know that a lot of foster care is meant to be just a safe landing place until a child can go back into their birth family. Uh, Many times, though, and I'm guessing in these particular situations, that might not be the ideal thing for the child. So as you're looking for permanent homes, forever families for these children, uh, what should we be watching for? Is this one of those foster-to-adopt situations, or is this where you prepare the adoptive parents in in yet another way to take a child into their home? Well, we do believe that all children deserve to have a permanent home. Yes. And that they need a family for a lifetime. Uh, So foster care is meant to be temporary. So children are either going back to birth families or uh, going into kinship care with relatives that can care for them, or they're going to be adopted. Um, So... Uh, in foster care, which Pathway also has, you know, we're preparing children for permanency, wherever that's going in those, mostly those three directions. Is that what we often see, mm-hmm. that the foster family becomes the adoptive family? Does that happen in most of mm-hmm. these cases? Well, when we first got into adoption in 2005... Uh, we had 50 adoptions in three years, and that's because these kids were stuck in foster care. And so the wow. foster children um, that were uh, in the homes were being adopted by their foster parents. And this really helped uh, at that point. It helped these parents to make a commitment for a lifetime to these children rather than just for temporary care. Uh, and also, you know, helping these children to know uh, these are going to be my forever parents here. And foster to adopt can be very beneficial to parents and kids because they've had time with each other to get to know each other. The child doesn't have to move again, doesn't have to go to a different school, make new friends. And it can be um, a really good solution for kids uh, to have a permanent home and not have to go to a new home that doesn't even know them. Talking about trust, I would think that once a family and a child move from the foster relationship to the process of adoption, that automatically that would build trust. Yes? Uh, you're saying when the For adoptive, the, when the family makes a commitment to them to yes, adopt. Yes, so what that must say to a child, yeah. what that must mean to a child that, oh, wow, you know me, you know my warts and all, and you are choosing me. You didn't even choose your birth children, but you are choosing me. That's got to go a long way for building trust. Well, it happens two different ways, really. Sometimes that is the case, and children say, I'm wanted um, I want you, and you want me. Yes, that's and, that's what you go go for, right? Yes, that's the and goal. we can have this great trust lifetime mm-hmm. together. But oftentimes, kids are scared, mm-hmm. and they're scared. What's it going to be like to be in this family forever? And do I really want that? Can I really trust this family? And I tell parents, it's a test. It's all a test. 
and uh, even after adoption, there can be a great uh, testing period of the child saying, okay, now I'm adopted. Does that mean there's something that I can do that you're going to reject me? What can I get away? How much can I get away with? Or what you're saying, do you still, do you love me now? Do you love me now? And do you love me now? Yes. And really, really trying. Right. And the idea. But what if I do this? Uh-huh. You know, these other children in your family, they're really important to you. What if I hurt one of them? Oh, wow. You know. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, if I run away, will you come after me? <laughs> you know, and just how far will you go to show that you want me and you're not going to give up on me? You know, what you're describing is not for the faint of heart. No, it's not. And parenting is not for the faint of heart. This is a whole other level. Right. Um, As far as adoption services, you are unique in that you do post-adoption services. That's unique, and that is helping parents really go into this with eyes wide open. Well, we are very excited that Pathway provides post-adoption services, which is for all families in the community that are adopted. So maybe they adopted internationally, adopted a younger child through this uh, public system or through a private agency. Whoever has adopted, Pathway has open doors for services after finalization to support families to keep their commitment. And uh, we do this because it's not always easy and because I believe these are our community's children, and our community needs to rise up and support these families who are saying they're going to commit to these kids because it's a very tough job. What are you looking for? Uh, not anyone could just come through the door and say, uh, hey, give us your biggest challenge. We're up to it. We're up to the task. You've got to be looking for something. Um, that would make a good home for one of these children who have really been broken from their past? Well, I would say um, that uh, those of us who work at Pathway is that we see uh, one quality of not giving up on a child, Mm. that that's so important. And the idea is that we're going to work through problems. We're not going to give up here and, you know, you have to go to another home. But the idea, we can work through anything together. And I would say I see that as um, a quality that's so important in a family and parents that are going are gonna to adopt a child. What about siblings in these cases? Uh, it often affects more than one child, and more than one child are coming out of a difficult situation together, and so there's yet another separation. They're coming out of their birth right. home, and they're being separated from birth siblings, birth family people. Right. Um, uh, how do you handle that? Well, uh, two things can happen. Again, is this can be a great thing to try to keep siblings together uh, in a home that will adopt. Uh, I just had a referral today for three children in the same home. Wow. Wow. You know, maybe more. I mean, we've had referrals for seven kids. Really? You know, and I Someone know f- says, please give me seven kids? <laughs> I know a family who adopted five boys that were siblings. Oh, you know, there is a crown in heaven just for them with only their name on it. That's unbelievable. Yes. Wow. So that's the goal is to keep siblings together. But however, sometimes keeping sips together can uh, be an obstacle in having a permanent home because maybe one of these children is just having such disruptive behavior that a family just can't hang on to these three kids because of one child. And I think of one of our families, they had three boys that they were adopting, and one of the boys was so disruptive that um, if they had to keep the three boys, it would have disrupted all three. Instead, the county did decide that they would separate the boys for the good of the other two that could be adopted by this family. And ha- that has been a successful adoption. So two of the boys stayed with a family. One, another arrangement was made. Yes. Oh, how is he? Because you know what? Part of that yeah. is heartbreaking, isn't it? It is very heartbreaking. And uh, unfortunately, there are kids who just go in and out of foster homes and maybe residential treatment and just do not find the stability of one home. Mm. And these kids are the most desperate and need an adoptive home, just as every child does. Yes. But uh, those who are going from home to home or place to place, it's really hard to find a family that can really manage uh, the child and make a commitment for a lifetime. We're visiting with Paula Gates from Pathway Caring for Children. She helps folks with adoptions there. And we do need to take a break. We'll be back after these words. You're listening to Our Community. <laughs> 